I think culture for me is the, the sort of foundation of who we are before we get started. So we go through life and we pick up all these attributes and habits and personality traits and dislikes and likes, but at the sort of base of it all, at the foundation of it all, we have our culture and our heritage, which sort of makes us who we are before we get started and what I think we often come back to. Culture can be the smell of hair oils or the taste of my granny schnitzel or the argument that my uncles will have as to whether Mount Gay rum is better than Chairman's rum. Something that you can't quite quantify, but we all feel, and you really feel the lack of it when you're outside of it. I think culture is the way of life and the traditions that a certain group of people, sometimes specific to a place, all hold. And no matter how different the people are within that place, there are certain things that they all have in common, which is the culture, the way of life, the way of being. I feel really proud of my culture at Notting Hill Carnival. Boy, it's trying to explain it to someone that's never been. Growing up in the early thousands as a black boy in South London was peak. There was lots of gangs. There was lots of postcode beefs. So sometimes going to carnival was scary because you knew that you would encounter people from rival neighborhoods. And the moment that really got me was that all these boys were going down shouting, West, West, West London. And I was like, ah, oh, dang, it's about to go down. I'm from South, they're gonna recognize I'm not from here. And then a whole bunch of boys from behind me was like, South, South, South. And I was like, we finna fight today. And then I can't remember what track the DJ played, but he played this track and it just all disappeared. All the aggression, all the puffed up chests and the, the heat and the frustration and the wanting to like prove you're from somewhere disappeared and everyone just started dancing and looking for the closest lady to convince her dance with them and it was such a huge swing pendulum swing from like real fear and anxiety of my body's in danger to celebrating music with my body with these bodies that on any other day would be suspicious of why I was there but it, I was free in that moment I mean, there are so many things that I'm proud of about, about my culture. But funny, doing this play and being in rehearsals and, and, and talking about you know, my grandparents and everyone else's grandparents and, and what they had to endure, but yet still they found a way to carry on, to persevere, to get their kin to this point. That's what I'm most proud of, just the resilience, the sense of, of community that was created because they had to. Things like throwing a partner and, 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 and things like that, you know, the, the community coming together because they couldn't get houses and, and loans. They come together, put their money all together and, and, and help each other out to, to get on that market so they can find homes to live. That, I couldn't imagine being turned away just because of the, the color of my skin, you know, especially so open as it was, racism. I'm just really proud of, of their resilience. One of my favourite things about like a little moment, little odd moment of Irish culture that I remember thinking about recently because I sort of witnessed it again. It's a Saturday afternoon in the pub and I was working behind the bar on the day and this thing occasionally happens where the traditional music players are in, or the diddly dee as we call them, and they were there with all their instruments and they were diddly 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 and the place was, you know, busy and people were chatting and having drinks and it was all ah, rah, sort of raucous and diddly diddly and then the strange things happened where a song will finish and then one of the musicians will just start this really slow ballad and so it's all there and it's all raucous and then all of a sudden it's like shh shh and then this like tiny petite girl just starts my young love said to me and goes on for 15 verses as most Irish songs have while silence in the bar just everybody standing there with their pints like this sort of going yeah it's beautiful and then 25 minutes later when the song ends da 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 oh it's lovely Anyway, and then the whole place just sort of kicks off again out of madness. And it's this sort of set, I guess, tradition or rule that that is just what happens when that goes on. Big thing in Wales are funerals. 
sounds ridiculous, but they always have been. And they used to be a great thing, and I think they still use it. It's, it's an older generation thing, so certainly my great-grandparents, my nine and tied on my gran and pop or ganka, which is a, a Welsh word for them. If ever anybody went to a funeral or a, and they'd come back and they'd say, I'm or beef, and if it was beef, it was a good send-off. So that was quite a funny one. You, literally, you'd see the women going, I'm or beef. And if it was beef, it was like, oh, good send-off. Yeah, if it was ham, poor buggers. <laughs> You can only feel sorry for him if it was ham or chicken. But, um, but yeah, that was quite a, a tradition at home. There's quite a few, but the first one on the top of my tongue is we just celebrated Burns Night. Burns Night celebrates Ravi Burns or Robert Burns, the sort of poet of Scotland. And all through primary school, we used to do competitions every year. You'd, you'd start off with... I've hurt my wee finger, that, that poem that everyone seems to know, to um, Tam O'Shanter and all these like classics. Of course, on Burns Night, we have this haggis, which does sound quite revolting to some people. It's all in a sheep's stomach. And you do this thing called the address to the haggis, and it's piped in by bagpipes, and you get your knife, and in the middle of the poem, you have to recite this. I don't know how many stanzas there are, but it's a long poem. And you end up having to cut open the, uh, the haggis and gushing your ready entrails bricht. Really, it's quite gruesome, but it's quite am amazing. So it's a great night of just like a celebration of poetry and, and togetherness and anything that ends in a kele, I think is great because there's that thing, you all, you all are together and it's, you end up with massive bruises up your arms from being swung around. It's, yeah, it's a real joyous occasion. My heritage is Jamaican, both parents. When I went over there, what I realised is that Easter is a bigger holiday than Christmas. So at Christmas time, it tends to be more a time for spring cleaning. So everybody's out sort of like going to the hardware shop, everybody's repainting their house, sort of cleaning up their front gardens and just everything is just sort of spick and span. Everybody does it at Christmas time. When it comes to Easter, everybody just sort of dresses in red and white. It's more of a celebration. There are no eggs. Nobody does Easter eggs. And it was just, it was just brilliant. Phrase or colloquialism that is, that is within my culture, within the Welsh culture. Lush, which I use a lot, and kutch which is my absolute favourite, which means cuddle or kiss or... So if somebody says, um, I'll see you, give you a kutch. Fala fashion monkey never boil good soup. <laughs> Fala fashion monkey never boil good soup. If your parents didn't want you to, to copy your friends and follow your friends and this, that and the other, they basically say, listen, follow fashion monkey never boil good soup, meaning it don't, don't follow, follow fashion <laughs> because it won't get you nowhere. Sucking diesel, that's a weird one, that's pr proper country. Like, I remember if I was, you know, in the bar and things were going well and, you know, it was really busy. I remember somebody else that was working with us was like, oh, gee, we're, we're sucking diesel now, boys. You know, which just means things are going well and fast. Those who can't hear must feel. Or those who can't hear must feel. So basically, it's like if you're tipping on your chair and you won't go, stop tipping on your chair because you might fall over. And you don't listen and you keep doing it and then the chair tips and you fall over. That's what they're saying. Mm, those who can't hear must feel. There's loads of great wee phrases that you're away with the fairies. If you if you ask, is your cat deed? Is when you're wearing your trousers at, at half mast <laughs> sort of thing. If they're too short for you, is your cat deed? <laughs> Get those trousers proper length. <laughs> is essentially what that means. When I went to Saint Lucia recently, and I was walking to the shop like a London boy, fast, like. I had trains to catch and money to make. A woman in the street stopped me and she went, where are you going? And I was like, to the shop. She said, you're going to be there when you reach. And it was, it's so small, but it felt quite profound. Because the shop is going to be there when I get there. Ain't going nowhere. Why am I rushing, sir? And when she said, it's going to be there when you reach, I let that echo in my mind, a little piece. 